The Gen Stefanis don't believe in wasting food, so scavenge for it in bins. Roland and Susan live in a Jesus Christian community with their 12-year-old son, Danny. The Aytons live the capitalist dream. Nick is a self-made millionaire and Debbie, a traditional housewife. They live in a four-bedroom mansion with children Max 19, Arnie 16, Obi 14 and Darcy age 9. The wives have agreed to swap husbands, homes and children for two weeks to see what they can learn from the experience. <laughs> How does a high-earning taxpayer cope with a husband who doesn't contribute? We'll just give you the answer. Yes or no? You just listen. It's not that simple. I can't get his teeth done on Nashville. But why can he? And what happens when your new mum makes you eat yesterday's leftovers? Well done. We've got some pot noodles here. Oh, bananas. That's just what we're looking for. Roland and Susan Genstefani are freegans. They believe you can live for free, scavenging on society's waste and eating food from bins. This is what we usually do in the evenings. It's our usual routine. Their family is also part of a small nomadic community called the Jesus Christians, with just 25 members around the world. I believe uh, what Jesus was saying mainly about working for love and not for the purpose of making money. With a missionary group called Jesus Christians. Their extreme Christian views have led to allegations heard by these false allegations of being called a cult. Their nomadic life has meant sacrifices for 12-year-old Danny who has always been taught at home, until recently starting school. Largely, Danny has grown up in an adult world because he's been surrounded by most of us. And uh, that's probably part of the reason why he's felt like, I, I want to go to school, there's more children. There may be no other kids in the community, but he does have a pet for company. I would have liked the dog because it, you could like teach it to do tricks and you can go for a run with it or something. But this is almost as good because, you know, little and it's cute and <laughs> different. Communal living means that all the house's work ethic is not the usual nine to five. We don't work for monetary gain because we actually work for God and God gives us everything we need. Back one of these? It's a radical idea to try and change the world. Get some money off Dad for the bus, please. Right, Arnie, they need some dinner money because you run down and get your wallet. Yeah. The Aiton family are wealthy entrepreneurs. Home is a four-bedroom mansion in Surrey, and they enjoy all the luxuries money can buy. I like it because it's really warm. It's got on-floor heating, really easy to clean. The expenditure of this household is um, anywhere between sort of ten and the Aitons make sure that their four children want for nothing. You know, we do spoil our children a little bit. Wannabe rock stars Max and Arnie have a home studio and £10,000 worth of drum kits. I got my kit for my 19th birthday and because Arnie done all really well in his GCSEs, um, he sort of cashed in on the same sort of deal. Obi is the sporty one. I've got three sets of golf clubs and they're uh, nice expensive ones. And nine-year-old Darcy is making her own cash. I do modelling. I earn about £900, something. All this money is controlled by housewife Debbie, who also manages the home and runs around after the... King. Things like that. Oh, I'm exhausted. Both wives are leaving home for two weeks and they've agreed to have no contact with their families during this time. Players. Bye. Bye. Oh my God. What? <laughs> no, I'm not seeing caravans. Oh my God, my heart's going. Okay, we're at a driveway now and the gates open by themselves. Well, that's interesting. Before they meet their new families, Susan and Debbie have a chance to explore their new homes. Oh boy. And what, just one family lives here? Gee, 
Oh my goodness, this is the bathroom. It's way too big for just a couple of people. You could probably have, you know, maybe 30 people living in a house this big. Ew. Presuming I'm sleeping up here, which is a bit weird. Oh, it's really damp up, it's really cold. Ugh. So, who lives in here? The clothes, I see. My wardrobe's probably a bit smaller than that. You obviously stuff their clothes in. That's all you can do in here. They've got an even bigger tip. Some people should have so much and other people should have so little. What's this then? It's a school uniform. I'm starting to feel a bit upset actually that people live like this when they clearly, um, you know, have high stand, you know, they still do school and I'm quite upset by it. Each wife has left a manual as a guide to the running of their home. As Freegans, I've never heard that before, we reject materialism, capitalism and consumerism. Oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. Our food is always fresh and mostly organic. We don't eat any processed food. As <laughs> oh, no. Please tell me what I'm not reading now. We get practically everything we need to survive from the bins. Bin raiding can be quite messy as you have to sometimes dig deep in the bin and sift through the spilt food items. This is shocking. Last Christmas we spent... What? <laughs> Last Christmas we spent £10,000 on the kids. Quite immoral, to be honest. In our community we don't celebrate birthdays. What has this child got to look forward to apart from rummaging through bins? Each wife has left a budget for the weekly shop. <laughs> It's £2.50. I have to go and scavenge, basically. Like a vagrant. Hello. Hello, hi. Hello. Glad to meet you. Hello, how do you do? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> hi, Danny. Hi, hi Danny. how do you do? I'm Debbie. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Have you guys all eaten? Yeah, we've all eaten. Oh, okay. Yeah. What did you have? Anything nice? Oh, uh, we had uh, lamb, lamb shanks. And, okay, uh, that sounds nice. Too. How do you guys normally um, sleep at night in this, in, in this camper van? Well, just us two will be sleeping in, but you have some. You have a separate motorhome where you can sleep oh, do all I? to yourself. Would you like to meet an extended family? Yeah, that would be good. The community hall is a camper van. I was thinking maybe she might be shocked at, you know, living in the camper van and the thought of uh, our lifestyle. We have some liberated lamb shank casserole, okay. um, which which we've cooked up, and if you're hungry and. And, 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 and willing to become yeah. a freegan nice. tonight, then we could always give you a bowl. Tomorrow I'll probably join you for okay, some great. supper. Okay, great. Sure. Oh, yeah, it'll be great. Would you be open to coming bin raiding at some point? Do you wear rubber gloves or anything? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, but, uh, I'll have we've, some we've got gloves some gloves for you. Oh, good. A bit of whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sue. You must be Max. Yeah, I'm Max. I'm Darcy. Hello. I'm going to meet you. <laughs> I'm Arnie. Hi Arnie. Hi. Nice to meet you. And Nick. Hello. Pleased to meet you. My name's Susan. Hello Susan, Sue. how are you? Very well, thanks. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Welcome. To the new week. <laughs> we do give out huge volumes of meat in this now. That's all right, I eat anything. Absolutely anything. Meat eater, likes a glass of wine. Hey, you know. So far so good. I'm really not sure how they're going to handle our lifestyle when I spill the beans to them. I, I don't know if you've heard of freeganism. They actually go around to um, supermarket rubbish bins and things like that and pick out all the good food that's and absolutely disgusting. Is there there a... is heaps. I think she's all right, actually. Yeah. But I think it's funny how they live like that. <laughs> Eat our bins. Eat our bins. Uh, I think that's brilliant. Uh, it's all right. Well, I'm clearly quite worried about how I'm going to survive over the next um, sort of eight days on food that's taken out of bins. It's just ridiculous. Um, you, you sometimes think, is this guy actually part of the real world? <laughs> It's millionaire housewife Debbie Aiden's first morning in a South London Jesus Christian community. 
So you've got double, double sandwiches. Yeah. First task is taking 12-year-old Danny to school. He was taught at home until two weeks ago. So would Danny always do his lunch or would his mum do it? Normally. Generally, generally, generally it's Danny. Danny. Well, well done, stuff. Danny. Very impressed. We're going to be dropped off at the usual spot, which is about a quarter of a mile down the road from where where the school is. So, are you worried about what people might like, yeah. think if you're dropped off in there? Further up. Bye. Got the impression from um, little Danny that he didn't want the uh, the camper van parked anywhere near the school because he just does find it an embarrassment, and he actually didn't want to be seen getting out of it, which I think is quite sad. Um, and I think the parents should seriously think about that. The Jesus Christians start the day with a morning meeting to discuss important issues. I noticed you didn't have an egg this morning. Uh, is there any reason why? Um, well, I thought I'd have some toast this morning because I wasn't quite sure um, what date was on your eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're really enjoying that, Debbie. I'm used to almond crust. Any particular thoughts that I might like to share from last night? I think what was on my mind last night was just cold. Sure. <laughs> I think I could get very bored here. Um, I do have some duties here, but those duties I can complete within two minutes, so I'm just sort of loitering around now, really. Just got a little list here of things I'm supposed to do this morning. I've just got the clothes at 12.30, Darcy at 12, and they're in different directions. Arnie's got to be met off the uh, train. Which is a similar direction. Well, in Surrey, Jesus Christy and Susan must take on the role of a traditional housewife. I'm running a bit late now. Don't know what Arnie's on picking up at the station. Yeah. Okay, no worries. See you then. Okay, Darcy, now where to? If you go left up there. All right. Do you have a hug or something? No. Yeah. No? Okay then. After the school run, Susan has a busy day of chores while Nick earns the crust. Got to do some ironing and maybe clean up the kitchen, put the stuff from the dishwasher away in the cupboards. Um, I'm not sure when I'll fit in the dusting and the, um, the laundry. I mean, I would have thought that most people, like married to a millionaire, would get pay somebody to come in and clean the house. Chores are more of a group activity with the Jesus Christians. Yeah, with this glove. Yeah. And then you squeeze it and then, you, and then it touches on, sort of like a Velcro. Oh, you know, Velcro. Oh, Velcro's, thing. right. Is there any way you could organise people to take their shoes off before they come in? It is possible, but... Uh, you could have, like, a little box. After community chores, it's off to work, spreading the word of God. Is it started? Looks like it needs a jump start. We just faffed about done nothing today. I can't think what I've done that's constructive apart from mop a floor. The Jen Stefanis don't have paid jobs. Their work involves preaching and collecting donations. You don't have much time because most people are in a rush. Right. And it's up to you to ask for a donation. Okay, you don't have that. to. Uh -huh. and, and don't pressure people. You know. Can I interest you in one? What, do I get a check? Uh, no, you have to no? give us a donation. Oh, oh sorry, I'm broke. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to give it. It's a bit like begging. <laughs> the Jen Stefani's freegan lifestyle is the topic of conversation in the Aiton house. So in terms of sort of like your community, is, is there actually formally an income that comes in the community? Does anyone have a job? Or... Nobody has a job. Nobody, nobody gets benefits. And so there's no tax status? No. There's no national insurance payments? No. But if one of you were ill, though, you'd still use the national health system, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? Doesn't that sort of pose a question? Then that's what the whole thing is all about. Freeganism sounds... I don't mean to diss it, but it sounds a little bit like communism. On a small scale, it works. You think it's a brilliant idea, but on a large scale, it can't happen. I guess that's where my belief in God comes into it. At the end of the day, she doesn't pay tax. And I think Dad's quite a strong objective to that because he pays a lot of tax. I'm sure it will come out later on in the week. If Debbie wants dinner tonight, she has to find it first. It's not allowed, but freegan principles are against waste. Clearly, it's, I don't know if it's legal or not, so I'm slightly anxious there. The thing here is speed. So right. when I open the... Uh, the lid if you can shine the torch, torch and I'll quickly scan all of the bins there and find yeah. out which is the most bountiful. Go. Let's go for it. I'll hold it. I'll Potatoes. Hold it. 
vegetables. Shall we just open up the other one just this to see apples, how to curl this some apples. Got. We've got apples. Ah, look, this completely different stuff. Hey, get that, so, get that. I'll just get that Turn thing. Bag. What's the date? What's the date? Oh, I can't. I can't tell at this stage. I'll just grab it. It was pretty exciting, really. Clearly, this. Look at this. Wow, somebody's been busy. Yes. As we opened the bins, they're actually full. So I'm quite surprised how much stuff they actually do throw away. And the bananas and everything, um, you know, look exactly how the sort of bananas I'd buy in the supermarket. You Was the tuna out of um, a can? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm. So I'm dying to hear. It's really good. Kind of, kind of all about uh, the bin raiding. Um, actually, I got a bit uh, greedy. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I opened the door, she was at the bin. So I have to learn a bit of um, bin etiquette, I think. Bin etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> when I ate the food, it sort of exited my head. <laughs> Debbie may be giving the freegan lifestyle a go, but she has concerns for 12-year-old Danny. Have you always lived um, in a camper van or have you lived in a house? I've lived in a house a couple of times, but not really lived, just for six months or something. Okay. We got her because we wanted to have a dog, but the dog was too big. Mm. The cat, we couldn't, it couldn't, it liked territories, you know. Mary, she's like a snug girl, seen Mary. I think all the adults here are, are doing their own thing and that's fine, but I, I don't know if it's fair for Danny to come in and um, basically spend his life sort of scavenging for food. We're out to help her with morning ablutions. You said you'll show me how to put the shower curtain to stop the water splashing. Okay. All right, the shower curtain is here. Shower curtain procedure. All right, there's a sh there's two, yeah, the shower curtain's here. It's just simply just sort of oh, just pull it across. Pulls across here. Oh, right. I thought it was something a bit like more that. technical. No, and yeah. what bucket do I use? Did you talk about a white bucket? Oh, I'll clean it under the sink. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, this is really taking advantage. In the sink. There's black curly hair. <laughs> Does he really think I'm gonna wash and wash my hair and shower in here? Uh, this is unbelievable. I'm gonna go and just walk up to Broccoli and this is next to godliness. Alf agrees to splash out on a brand new bucket. Knock knock. Yeah. Hi Terry. Oh. There's one bucket. Oh thank you. And the, uh, Perfect. Yeah, the... Oh freezing. Oh my god, it's not even going down. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't know where to tip the water. Oh. I'm getting a bit concerned now because the basic needs that people want aren't being met here. Food, I haven't had any breakfast, being warm, and also um, washing. What I'm saying, it's not one need, it's all three needs just are being... Oh, would you like to have something to eat? We've got maybe some eggs. I didn't really want to um, eat the eggs because I think we discussed that because, you know, they've obviously been taken out of a bin. Well, we're eggs. open to go into a supermarket if you like. We can get some food uh, for you. I think we might have like to, to do something like that, like actually. In Surrey, Susan is rather less willing to go shopping. I'd never do a big shop like this. It's a long list. Um, so isn't it a more appealing way of shopping, though, is it? This or... Mm. Not according to my opinion. Sixty pounds and a bit more, wasn't it? Pounds. The amount of food that we just bought for two days was sixty pounds. Society and the community around you. It isn't really money that's of value. It's the resources that are of value. It's all a bit of a, a game in, in now understanding that is really quite irrelevant. Isn't there a hint of hypocrisy there? In what way do you feel like we could help you? I'm not asking for help, that's the issue. <laughs> so. OK, I guess I see that the whole world would exist if all the money disappeared overnight. <laughs> I'm, I, I, my question remains unanswered, I think. I'm funding that lifestyle, whether she wants to hear it or not. And I think the doing good and teaching is a smokescreen for I'm lazy. Money as far away as possible from the school gate. Better sprint, 400 meter sprint, Dan. Hi, Danny! Ah, he's going for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he can run if he wants to. How do you feel as a father when your son tells you he's embarrassed to 
get out of the caravan near the school. How does it make you feel? But, uh, you know, obviously I, I do hope that he can get past uh, the peer group pressure expectation and, and not be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're well, all unique. What if he doesn't? What if it starts getting to him? Well, I don't know. I can only stand aside and give advice. Have you ever asked Danny how he feels living like this, where he could have basic things? It's not an issue. It's not a worry. Financial concerns are not a worry. God has always provided enough and more. I mean, in the scriptures, it talks about the cup overflowing with blessings. Mm -hmm. But for Debbie, there's something else overflowing. All you have to do is simply unscrew this uh, top there. Yeah, like that, yeah. Yeah, and you just sort of grab the, the toilet and, and just very, in. very carefully tip it in. I've done some disgusting things in my time, but this is the worst. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> because I don't get it. At the Aiton, Susan's struggling to keep up with Debbie's chores. So it's pick up Darcy, bring her back, give her a snack, get a change, get a thing, get her down to dance, uh, hang around for the dancing, bring her back home. Yeah, you need to start leaving about now. Bye, Nick. <laughs> This is an extremely easy house to sort out, clean, but I just don't think Sue's used to doing it. She, she tied it up the other day and completely forgot the basement, which I had to do at six o'clock this morning. So, what's tap dancing like? It looks really fun. Yeah, it's fun. Do you want chocolates, Bernie? Do you want about how many of us are? Seven. Well, I really have to get the potatoes on, so I might have to do the hot chocolates a bit later. Nick. Um, yeah, everything's fine. I was just wondering, uh, with the fish, do you fry it or do you, do you boil it? Yeah, just, yeah, just, just lightly yeah. fry it. I don't know why Debbie doesn't ask for help. It seems like Debbie needs to really sit down and work out how sustainable this sort of lifestyle is. Well, dinner's ready. Oh, is it? Yep. Debbie's discovering that community life also has its problems. It is coming up through here, but I think it'd be on work. It's too wet when it dries up tomorrow, perhaps. What I'm afraid of is the water getting into the light and short circuiting it. What I would dream of doing is fixing up this motorhome a lot. Like, like just, just fixing it up, just, just, just fixing it up, yeah. Just being able to fix it up so quickly without having to go through all the stress of just... Ugh. When I first read Susan's manual, um, I actually didn't know what freeganism was. Having sort of been there, done it, I've come out thinking it's totally wrong and you can't survive on raiding people's bins. Um, I can't think what the... It's rule change day and both Debbie and Susan are keen to bring new regimes into their houses. I have tried hard to embrace and understand your freegan lifestyle. However, I am still not clear what you contribute to society. So I have decided, Roland, that you should get a job to have a better quality of life for your family, especially Danny. I thought I explained that we're contributing to society by doing and inspiring people to work for love and doing things out of love. So your household at Roka, that much money would feed a family for two and a half years. So I'm going to try and encourage you to radically re reduce your consumption. If you can eat everything that's on your plate, because you can't eat anything until you've finished what you've left from the previous meal. I have lived in your camper van, and in my opinion, it is a very poor standard of living. Danny is now a teenager and is clearly embarrassed about his home. So I have arranged for you to live in a flat where Danny will have his own bedroom. When you compare our living standard, uh, it's all relative. But compared to the third world, compared to a hut in the middle of... We're not in the third I world. I know, I know. But, um... ...for you to go go-karting. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I'd like you, Nick and Max, to experience going bin raiding. <gasps> and I'm going to cook up a bin raided meal. I don't want to eat our bin. You definitely don't have to eat it. Bin raiding is banned. I don't think it's acceptable. 
and I feel really strongly about this. Because Debbie is doing most of the chores, I've made a little roster, which is up there on the fridge. Oh my God, you're ironing my uniform. So, so what do you do during the day while I'm at school working all day and then I have to come back and do all these jobs? And while I'm doing homework? Look, these are not onerous tasks, guys. I cannot handle the fact that I swear, <laughs> I swear a housewife, I know I'll help out around the house, but a housewife is meant to tidy the flipping house. Roland already has some issues with Debbie's new rules. When she came out being ready, her, her eyes lit up, she saw the food, it was fantastic. She could see the insanity of the waste. And then to go on to say that we're gonna, she, she was going to ban bin raiding, I think was just, just outrageous. I think Danny is very excited because um, he did jump up and start packing very quickly. <laughs> on the way to his new home, Fregan Roland must also become a respectable customer. Well, it's sort of like a slight culture shock in a degree because we, um, there's a reduced section here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to try and use stuff before. Right, OK, well, we'll buy so, this can of tuna. OK. <laughs> because we could probably use that in a sandwich, as you say. OK. When I see the amount of money being spent on this, it, it, does, it does shock me, and it's only just for a couple of meals. Tonight, Debbie's moving the family into a new flat. It's a treat for Danny, who's spent most of his life in a camper van. It's really sweet and it's so warm. Oh, cool! I think this is Danny's room. It's just really big and it's nice and it's uncluttered and it's space and it's warm and I can move around and there's PowerPoint. <laughs> That's how I feel. I mean, I'm comfortable in the motorhome as well. I mean, I'm comfortable almost anywhere, to be honest with you. This is for Danny. Cheers. I think the key thing I want to achieve is really for Danny to have a sense of what sort of family life's like in a home where you've got your basic needs met. All he has to think about is going to bed. Good night. In Surrey, Nick and Elder's son Max are experiencing Susan doing a freegan style shop. I think the concept of bin raiding I'm uncomfortable with unless you have the permission of the person who owns the bin you're going to raid. So we're going to what she does and how she, she does, does it. it. And if there is any food in there. And see how far she can run. <laughs> she's coming, she's coming. She's coming. God. When you look desperate when you do that, don't you? Fuck me. Well, she's leaning in. Look, she's actually leaning in. She actually, look, look, look. Her legs up in the air. She actually looks like a tramp doing it. She has the stash. Fuck she is. She's just walking out, bold as brass. Hi. Hello. You want to have a look? Yeah. Dark chocolate here, look. Fair play, dark chocolate. Look at this, Maltesers. They just chucked that because the bag's open. It's oh, quite cheap, is it? Look at this. Oh, it's, it's probably got a hole in the bag. Somewhere. Orange juice? No. If you're not comfortable, I won't bring it home because I don't want to take anything into your house that you're not comfortable about. This is really sort of, you know, prove your point in many respects. The only issue for me, sure. I'd be a lot happier if... if we had permission. We had permission to do it. I'll go and put it back. It's cool. Obviously, I'm not feeling that great about throwing back perfectly good, edible, usable products, but I think it's, it's made him think, and I think that's the most important thing. I think it's quite shocking to see the amount of perfectly good produce um, in there within date, and it's just started because of the packaging. Style meeting. If we can just have five minutes or all that of quiet time just to sort of listen. Ready? Go. Okay, it's too hard, is it? It's impossible. <laughs> okay, Darcy, this is going in the fridge and it'll be for dinner when you come home. You have no snacks, nothing until this is finished, okay? Yeah. But at least Susan's having some success with her new rotor, as Max, Arnie and Obi are mucking in with the domestic chores. I'm cleaning up cat piss. It's my job is fair to share, um, spread all the chores around. Um, and no, I think, I think it's good. It's Danny's 13th birthday today, and Debbie's planning a surprise party. 
he won't expect any of this. He's probably never had uh, a birthday cake, candles, a few balloons. She's also got Roland a job in recycling. It's the first time he's had paid work in nearly 20 years. Debbie uh, put a lot of thought into picking a job that would be uh, most practical and actually contributes towards I've society. I've got a job we all sweep up for uh, the customers, so right. Mark's got a shovel and a broom around there. All just, right, uh, sure, OK. Uh -huh. The rehabilitation project to go back into the system is going to succeed on me. I've made up my mind. This is what I'm doing. I'm working for God, and, and, and nothing will stop me. I don't have time to work in a recycling centre, so I'm not going to work tomorrow. I mean, my job is to try and do uh, jobs that most people don't want to do, like this, this revolutionary lifestyle that I'm, that, that I'm trying to inspire people to consider. For me, it would, re it would represent prison to confine my focus and think I need the money to live so I can pay the rent. I have heard this story so many times and um, to be honest with you, I'm quite bored with you. You ram home the message and I get it. I understand okay, what you're then saying. Why do you keep asking the same question? You do. What would you say if Danny said, Dad, I don't want to live like that anymore? Like with everything, we discuss issues and nothing is said. But he's concrete. told you his issue. It's nothing to discuss. I think it's he's an just awful lot told of you. Emotionally charged type. Can no. we just slow down, please? No, you're not answering my question. I yes or no? Can you just listen? It's not that simple. Oh, yeah. Because maybe there might be uh, something that I'm missing when he gives his reasons for wanting to live He just in the doesn't house. want to live in a, in a caravan. A I just don't act on whim or feelings. I act on reason. He's just lazy. It's just bone idle. I'm getting to the point where I just say, oh, fine, live like that. Um, it doesn't really affect me, but the local school, um, he's quite happy to use the national health system and have his teeth done because he's got all this brace, and I can't even get my son, who needs the same treatment, done on national health. He needs the same treatment, and my dentist has said that, um, it's really upsetting to it. I need to pay £4,000. Guys, tell me to get Obi um, in the National Health. You can I have to go and... Um, um, Jenny! Debbie's determined not to spoil Danny's special day. The Jesus Christians don't celebrate birthdays, but now it's Debbie's rules. All right, okay, here we go. Uh, okay, thank you very much. This is so cool. I've been here, I've been watching for like a, 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 quite a while, and I've been, it looks really, really fun. I just wanted to show uh, Roland that um, it's okay to hand over 60 quid for a birthday treat for his son. Working all week, nine to five, staring at the clock. I think it was a, there was a good point in what Debbie was saying uh, about spending some money on, you know, on various, uh, various activities with Danny and yeah, there's, there's a place for that. Roland's starting to realise that birthdays aren't such a bad thing. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's do that then. Let's okay, trick, so I'll, I'll let's trick him. I'm just doing the dishes and uh, I want to see him smile. Happy birthday. Wow. Look at this. Well, the most sport little boy in the land. There we go, blow them all out and then make a wish. Hooray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank as well. Thank you. He was really happy, you know, just with the, the time and the attention. And we usually don't celebrate birthdays. In I'm open to reconsidering regarding birthdays. It was special and it was for me and I got a present. Got a couple of magazines in a bag. It's cool. In Surrey, nine-year-old Darcy's back from school and ready for a snack. Darcy, you've got to eat your leftover cereal. And then you can eat anything you like after that. Yeah, yeah, I need more honey, I think. Yeah, I hope he's, I hope he's uh... Darcy, that's breaking the rules. You won't be able to have a snack, okay? Until dinner time. <laughs> Darcy, come here, please. What is it? Sweet. A sweet? Where'd you get the sweet from? 
me school bag. Now you've cheated on eating the sweets. So this is what you eat before you eat your dinner. They're moldy. They're not moldy. There's nothing wrong with them. Okay. There really are people who are starving and dying and there needs to be some change. Problems that I had earlier um, with Darcy. Did you understand why the rule is there about not wasting food? No. Okay, other people in the world wait for trucks of food to go by in the hope that the food on the truck will fall on the road and they can pick it up and eat it. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with the cereal. It Soggy, it had not turned green. I can show you the bowl right now. Can you tell me where it's green? I've got the Rice Krispies right here. I think you tend to exaggerate things a little bit, Darcy. Where are they green? Mm. Okay, you're making it up. Well, why she got to eat the bananas? I want her to eat meat and free veg and then go to bed. Well, I don't want her wasting food. I feel like there's a lack of respect yeah, 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 no, you've for you the rule. rule and I think no, she I think I'm sorry, there is no lack of respect. Darcy hasn't followed your instructions. There's no lack of respect from our point of view at all. The only pushback that I would have, sir, you have every reason to tell Darcy's broken the rule and what have you, but I don't want Darcy to have a guilt trip about st the starving world. It's not her burden. I mean, is, is that the sort of, if, if your son did something wrong at home, would you burden him with various anxieties around the world? That's a heavy bit of baggage for youngsters to carry. I make the rules of... Go on, go on, go on, go on. Just follow it, swallow it. Go, 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 go. That's it. Well done. <laughs> this is just awful, isn't it? Sorry, guys. Come on. It's just dreadful. That is. That's just making a point. No, I don't. I don't want to do that. She was quite focused in getting Darcy to do her rules. I went along with it, but. It was quite difficult. Despite the upset last night, Nick's continuing with Susan's rules. That's, her, that's, her, that's, that's what she's going to make us do. They have to eat their supper, which they had last night for breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to go hungry and constipated for the rest of the week, probably. It's the last day of Debbie's rules, and she wants to make it memorable for Danny. Wow. He says it's wow. Really cool. I never thought ever this. Her final surprise is a party for Danny. What do you want, a sausage? I think she's really done a really good job in, in making uh, this house very comfortable and giving a really warm welcome. Yeah. I'll always be grateful for the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I think I enjoyed Debbie's rules, most of them anyway. Um, it was nice to have a birthday party. After opposition from the hungry Aitons, Susan's finally agreed to do a low-budget shot. Why can't we buy fresh milk? What's wrong with fresh milk? Yeah. Um, nothing. What's wrong with this milk? Because I prefer fresh milk. Yeah. If there's any more complaints about the food, I, I'm just going to take it back. But I'm just really tired of, of the whinging and the complaining. I really appreciate this food, so that's not a problem. Well, don't make us feel guilty, because we're not feeling guilty. I just feel like no matter what I do, they're going to complain unless they get what they want. I want some food. I haven't eaten a good, decent dinner in about four days. What Sue wants to do is, is a dictatorship. She's creating an extreme position to give us a hard time. When I get angry, I get fucking angry and I'm not going to change my position. I don't really want to go back in the house, to be honest. I feel tension every time I go in there. And I'm just really happy to be outside here, actually, and I'm really happy to be able to just sit here by the fire and environment. It's the end of the swap, and both wives are preparing to leave. I'm definitely ready to go home now. Um, I really need to see um, my little girl. A little bit sad to leave everyone here, and also a little bit like disappointed that I didn't do more. Uh -oh. C O B. Oh, you love me too. <laughs>
I actually think that Debbie for trying hard to um, help us. I think my family will appreciate that a little bit. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Just hi. <laughs> Probably one of the major things I really struggled with was the the wealth in the household and the waste. The food thing became a real issue um, with the family because one of my rules was that um, no food should be wasted, basically. It caused an incredible amount of trauma. Nick was, was throwing up in the sink no. <laughs> trying to eat some green broccoli that was left over pretty much and Darcy was. really was in tears. She was yeah. having a really hard time I'm over right. Over eating a quarter Didn't of a tears banana. Make you stop and obviously understand why they're forced to eat it. Whether you eat that food or not has no bearing on other people in around the world being able to feed themselves. Well, that's where I disagree as well. You see, if food is wasted over here, it has an impact over here because everything, the planet, is all connected. You have <laughs> awoken an awareness. You, you have pricked the conscience quite heavily. Sometimes Danny had the world on his shoulders because of obviously your extreme views about all your environmental issues, you know, issues abroad with all the starving and whatever. And I feel that Danny takes a lot of that on his shoulders. And I just wanted just for five minutes for him to release that and just think about light yeah. stuff, you know, just like birthday cake. And, uh, and Debbie have really achieved. But the way you live is actually was strangling me. I couldn't be free. I had to get out and I had to send him to work. Um, I was concerned that there was no you income. You couldn't work the whole time. Well, what happened was, um, working in my world oh, okay. is where you work for money. OK. Um, so it's I was, called a job. Yeah, yeah, I was having issues about the fact he doesn't work. He went to work, so I was happy yeah, that day. I was, a job. I was happy and I was smiley. So for me, your way of life gives me no freedom at all. If you think freedom is being able to buy things, you know, to be able to purchase things. No, it's not, not just, that's that's not no, 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 saying. that's not what I'm that's saying. That's what she's saying. Well, it's, it's you're making... And you have these dreams and you want to make change, but it's a state which in many ways you don't like is, is your safety net. It's allowing you to indulge in these things. And it's a, as a taxpayer, that makes me feel uncomfortable because it makes me feel as though you're getting a free ride. If I can be permitted to share, what I consider to be the bigger picture. I believe God made this earth for you and me to share. But I don't believe in sitting around and begging. I believe if I don't work, I shouldn't eat. I just work for a different motivation. But what's the Maybe contribution? You, you, you're avoiding answering the question. You're both dancing around the edges. Give us the contribution, the tangible things. The purpose of making money, but to make the world a better place. You're using the state. I'm this funding. Is, you don't, I'm not, your son I'm not, goes not to school. It. You're not getting it, Nick. God made man. Man made money. Money made man mad. So I'm, sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Ron. I haven't, I haven't preached to you. You're preaching to me now. I'm just asking questions. You're actually preaching to me, which I find quite difficult to take. But you see, what I'm trying to say, Nick, God provides then it's God's responsibility to look after us. Oh, wow, look at you. Hi. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I've lost so much weight. <laughs> How thin I am. Oh. I haven't pooped for four days. <laughs> oh, A month on and the Aitons are back to consuming. Days. But some of Susan's rules have made a difference. She raised a lot of awareness around a lot of the issues, the environment, recycling, um, not wasting, conserving energy and what have you. I think my children really do have a grasp of how much good quality food costs and I think they definitely do appreciate it. If they do waste, you know, a nice piece of chicken or meat, I'm, you know, soon calm down on them pretty quick. The real change has been on the domestic. I can clear up and then I go upstairs and I hear all sorts of bangings and shouting and going on, but I just leave them. We used to find it being sort of like a punishment to help out, but now we sort of do it as trying to help mum out. The Jen Stefanis are back to bin raiding and anti-consumerism, but they've had a rethink when it comes to Danny. Yeah, one of the best things about workshop is getting a computer. I can relate to my friends more by being online more. Yeah, these computers are 
probably the biggest change I've had in my life. And there's been an even bigger change to how they live. This is our new motorhome and it's really great, it's brilliant because there's just a bigger bathroom and bigger bed and I was thinking that maybe one day when I've made my friends like really, really best friends, I might invite them over. Danny was feeling, uh, you know, a little bit embarrassed about the fact that he lives in a, in a motorhome with his friends at school and we were considering, well, should we get a flat, you know, and we're still sort of t tossing that one up.